Hello, I'm Natalie Graham with the new look inside out for the South East. Now, the government has chosen special sites around the coast of England which it thinks need extra cash to be revived. And one of them is deep beneath Margate, as Glen Campbell reports. Its Art Deco Tower is a local landmark, part of the furniture of this iconic seaside resort. In its heyday, the Cliftonville Lido was the Blackpool Tower of the South East. Nowadays, of course, well, the paint's peeling and the Lido is a bit, well, unloved. But slowly, the tide is on the turn down here in Margate. From September, the Turner Contemporary Gallery is hosting the Turner Prize, bringing home art's most coveted award. And just along the seafront, dreamlands risen from the ashes, a neon blaze for flocks of day trippers making the most of the summer heat wave. But walk up the hill from Cliftonville, and what was once the jewel in Margate's crown, the Lido, lies forgotten, boarded up in 1978. But this month, deep below in the cliff, there's activity underground, as a team funded by a grant from the Coastal Revival Fund explore the Lido. I think the laser survey's been done within the next month or so. Grab your hard hat and prepare to travel back through the centuries. This is the first time cameras have been allowed to follow the Lido conservationists as they explore the secret chambers of the Lido. This is a twilight world once populated by flocks of Georgian, Edwardian and Victorian bathers. We actually started the project ourselves and then found out we got the 44,000 grant, which is to get the site cleared out, get structural surveys and laser scans and um, ground penetrating radar on the site to see if there's anything that we don't know about. Originally called the Cliftonville Baths, the Lido has in its depths the only purpose-built seaside underground spa carved into the rock. Back in the 1830s, this place attracted thousands, and because the Georgians bathed naked, the women needed a private place in which to swim. How excited do you get when you go down there and look at it? Extremely exciting. <laughs> I think everyone does. It's hard not to be. Anyone that goes down there normally says, wow, that's the first thing they, no, no, so they say. Um, but no, it's fascinating. And the amount of history that's on display and clues as to what might have happened, and there's a lot of mystery there, so there's lots of pieces of evidence to look at and try and piece together. But first, to get to the bathing caves, you have to pass through four floors of history. The story that it tells in terms of the way that it's been built up layer upon layer and the, the sort of sequence of events it portrays is what's um, very valuable and very interesting from an architectural perspective. You've got the, next to the plunge pool, you've got what's what we call the rotunda, uh, which is later turned into a nightclub called um, Misty's and then it went to Hades at one point. And then you've got the tunnel that comes off of that. I'd say it's a one-off piece of history, really. It's the first and only example of it, I do believe. So, Linton, a Herculean task on your hands? Oh, indeed, yes. It's never-ending. How much rubbish and where are you putting it? Definitely had 20 tonne out of the rotunda, and it's just that one area on its own. And there's, so it comes up here and sorted, and it goes out for a hole into the various different skips. But with just £44,000 of coastal regeneration money, not a lot of regeneration will take place here at the Lido. As Thanet District Council's leader acknowledges, much more investment is needed. Well, obviously, the challenge that faces us is the one that faces all local authorities, that we don't have funding. Um, so we're reliant on grants and stuff like that in order to make these things happen. If the government are actually looking to do things, uh, they need to put some money there. So, yeah, it's a bit of a crude answer, but it could actually provide money for us to do the things we're looking to do. We're seeing the area change. It's the Turner Centre and Dreamlands made there. It would be nice if the Lido could be part of the same kind of regeneration in Cliftonville. Back underground, our tour with Linton continues. First, through the cavernous dance floor that held a 1,000 people in the 1940s and 50s, and then through the eerily silent locker room, where hundreds changed into their trunks and swimsuits. We've got 2,000 lockers down there, 1,000 uh, for the males and 1,000 for the females. And there's evidence of times long past everywhere. This leaflet from the 1930s left by a bather hoping to visit Dreamland next. 
and then you get down to the bottom and into the secret chamber. So that would have been the original flint wall, and then it was open above, wasn't it? And this is facing west, so you would have had the sunset. Yeah. So this was the bathing pool for women and children. We look down there, William, I mean, it's a big site. What are the challenges that you've got from a structural perspective? So actually, although on the face of it, things look very bad, the fingers crossed, there's actually quite a lot which doesn't take too much work to save in terms of the actual structure. And we're now having full laser scans, uh, proper structural surveys, proper architectural surveys carried out. It's a complete labour of love. It's a fantastic project, and it's the first time that I've been, you know, being involved in something which is actually genuinely for the community. The hope is a full laser survey will produce a 3D model of the Lido, and when the site is safe, groups can be given tours. Up on the surface, I went to see the man who heads the private consortium, Neville Bork, who owned the Lido. What we're looking at is trying to turn that area in there into a realistic attraction for people to come to. And now that takes a lot of care, a lot of thought and a lot of money. Lovely area for a beautiful hotel, okay, one of the best hotels locally. The underground area would become a spa hotel. But first, Neville has to get planning permission. The Lido's Georgian bathing caves were given Grade 2 status, meaning it's of special interest and should be preserved. So plans for a hotel or flats all have to work around the protected core of the Lido. This place needs developing. It needs to be looked at as a, a way to make enough profit to turn all of the parts into something interesting for people. Last September, five members of the House of Lords Regenerating Seaside Towns Committee visited Margate. What they praised was the town's emerging arts and cultural economy. They were so impressed, they recommended other coastal towns follow suit. Thanet's visitor economy grew 9.2% since 2015, but Manston Airport languishes. Ramsgate Port remains ferryless, and 75% of private sector tenants in Cliftonville receive housing benefit. There's still a long way to go. And here at the Lido, because it's partly Grade 2 listed, preservation comes before new development, and Thanet Council's heritage advisor is here to make sure that history comes first. Damp underfoot. So, where are we? Uh, we're under the car park of a 1920s Lido in Cliftonville. And uh, this is the room where they stored bathing machines. Built in 1824, it's a 45-foot diameter circular room, which originally had a dome with an oculus on the top. Right. And it's Nick's job to ensure any modern development of the Lido doesn't infringe on its protected status. Why is it listed? Uh, historically, I'm going to say it's unique. It's the only purpose-built seaside spa, underground spa facility in Britain. So you've got to imagine that late afternoon you can start to see some of the famous Margate um, sunset over the sea. Turner made his reputation painting Thanet sunsets, and some think the sun set on Margate long ago. But maybe it's actually Margate's past that holds the key to this deprived seaside resort enjoying a glorious new sunrise. I think time is here. I do really think that the, that the council will come around to realising that the Lido has to be the next big step in the future of Margate and Cliftonville. The plan is to complete the works here by March 2020, after which we'll all be welcome to venture down and see the place where our ancestors came to bathe and have fun. Glenn Campbell reporting. Coming up.